That second countdown. Brian? How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? How are you? I got too much noise now. I can't hear. You're live, Jim. That's you here. Okay. And we're recording here. Do I need to move this plant? That's pretty hey everybody, low. welcome back to the Jim Vice Pro Football Handicapping Show here on the patio at Dom DeMarco's Pizzeria and Wine Bar, where the good times roll and the wine flows. Speaking of wine, after the show, stick around. We're going to give away, once again, bottles of wine complimentary of j -Lore Winery. First, before we get to the panel, let me introduce the gentleman whose face and name is on the show. Jim Vice, how are you today? I'm doing great. Just had a great pizza, nice cup of coffee. Food is outstanding the food here, isn't here, it? The food here is amazing. If you just, if you, don't, you just forget about the show, just come here and eat. I'm telling you. And not only that, awesome. it's the best happy hour in town. It's not like 5 to 6 or 5 to 8. It's 2 to 6, Monday through Friday. 50% off all pizzas from 2 to 4. And wine is half off glasses and bottles from 2 until 6 o'clock. That's four hours and, of wine, two to hours of pizza. This, and not to mention the selection is amazing. It is. Then you have $11 items with Philly fries and eggplant pizzettes. Have you had those? I have not. You have to try those. Okay. Fried eggplants with this marinara sauce and a ricotta cheese on top. It is to die for. And I'm not a big eggplant fan, but you got to try the eggplant pizzettes. We'll do it. How's your eyes? You, last time we talked, you had to go for eyes. I have a follow-up tomorrow to see what's going on, but it's better than it was a week ago. A week ago, it was, it was actually hard to do the show because it kept flashing. Like, it was like, like having a flashlight in your eye. It just boom, bling. Well, I, I, have, I have no vision of my left, so you at least had a flash. Well, that's true. You, <laughs> you, you, had, you had that problem. Yeah. That's right. Let's introduce a couple guys on our panel today. One is with us a couple weeks ago. He began by working in the sports book at the Barbary Coast. And then later on, I don't know if you knew this, Jim, but he worked with Ray Charles to develop a slot machine for him and Jeff Whitelaw. Jeff, welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you worked with Ray Charles. Yeah, for a few years. Uh, we developed a slot machine, a doll, and we did a few things with, uh, with commercials with him, with uh, Powerball and, and the lotteries. And joining us for the first time, a very experienced veteran sports caster, sports caster with Sports X Radio. He even worked with former NFL veteran Bob Golick. Welcome, Kenny Thompson. Thank you so much. Appreciate it to be here with the legend, Jim Feist. It's an honor, no question about it. And the food here, Albert Scallion, are you kidding me? The pizza here is phenomenal. I grew up in Jersey. My dad was from Brooklyn. And so we know pizza. And this place is top of the line. Did you go to, have you been to DeFars? No, never been to the original DeFars, but this is just like it from what I understand. So let's get into it. I'm going to start with you and then we'll go down the line. Speaking of Lions, let's go with the Lions. They win 52-6. Tell me about the acquisition of uh, Zarius Smith and the impact he's had. And then on top of that, maybe Kenny, for you, the injury to the linebacker Alex Anzalone, who's supposed to miss six to eight weeks with a broken forearm, what's that impact going to be? Tell me, what. how has the acquisition of of Zadarius Smithman. Well, in the, in the when you win 50 to 52 to 6 or whatever it was, you know, it's like you can play with half your players. <laughs> that was not even <laughs> that was not even a game. Uh, going forward, I mean, this team is now people are saying it's the best team in football. I mean, we're we're going to see when we get to the Super Bowl and the, it, and also Angeloni losing that. I mean, it, it's it it remains to be seen how many what impact these injuries are going to have on this team going forward but they have the chemistry they have the offense they can run the ball golf plays really well under this tutelage uh very dangerous i think the only team in the nfc that looks like in in my opinion that could be competitive to say they're the better team or the equal to in the nfc would be maybe the eagles because not because i love the coach or anything but they do run the ball very well, and when you can run the ball the way the Eagles can run the ball, you, you can become very dangerous because you, you're controlling the game. And you can, it's like when you, when you see the great offense for the Bengals, they can get the lead, they can score, they can, they can score like in two seconds, but they can't, they can't control the game because they can't run the ball. Mm -hmm. So it's, and then it depends on their defense, and their defense sucks. And they give up. It's like the old days with Dan Fouts. They could score 45 and give up 46. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, 
Jeff, I'm going to come to you in just a second about the, the line for this coming week when they go to Indy. But, Kenny, for you, two now key injuries to this Lions defense. How impact is this going to be? Well, they were adjusting nicely without Hutchinson. And, that, of course, that hope that he would be back if they made it to the NFC Championship or the Super Bowl was out there. Uh, but they moved on. Next man up mentality with Dan Campbell. I mean, that's the way it is. I just wish he would have kicked that freaking field goal last year. But at the end of the day, I still have a lot of respect. I'm still old school. I'm not all an analytical guy or a sabermetrics guy. I'm still somebody that puts human element into these games. Uh, Anzalone is a big, big time guy on defense because he's one of those signal callers that makes sure everybody else is in the right place. And so when you lose two guys like that, it is key that they did grab Zadari Smith because this kid knows how to play the game. And he's going to be an impact player. And now he's going to have to up his game a little bit more as well. But their offense is good enough to outscore anybody. And last week in the Mark Lawrence Wise Guys play, I did use the Lions as my two-point play, and I used Texas State as my one point. So I think I won the two games 115 to nine. I'll never do that again, but that was, <laughs> uh, when you're laying 27 and a half with Texas State and 14 or whatever it was with the Lions, people look, especially in NFL, they're like 14, there's no way. This team is legit. I went and saw them against Arizona. I was at that game, Cardinals and Lions. Detroit looked, 40 pounds heavier per man on both lines of scrimmage. That's what it looked like. They were wearing their white uniform, but they pushed Arizona around. Arizona hung in there, and Kyler Murray's playing at the top of his game since the injuries. It looks fabulous. But this Lions team is in a class by themselves right now. Their running game is legit, and the Raiders are finding out, yes, you do need a running back, and the Giants are finding that out as well. Over a few million dollars to lose you know, Jacobs or to lose Barkley is absolutely ridiculous. You need to pay. Not only do you need one running back, if you want to be the best in the league, you better have two running backs. And look at Detroit. They've got two running backs. You mentioned Philly. they got two pretty good ones, and they got still the tush push with Jalen Hurts on that third and one, fourth and one stuff. I remember a couple of years ago, there were, the media was all saying, well, don't, you don't have to pay the running backs. They don't matter <laughs> anymore. What bull BS that was. Yep, no <laughs> doubt about it. You better pay these guys. And, and when you look at it, with the Giants and what the Raiders squabbled over, it was literally like $3 million a year. For, for play. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, and then you're going to go out and overplay, overpay uh, Brandon Ayuk? Are you kidding me? And we know Juwan Jennings is just as good as Ayuk. Why are you paying all that money? The receivers are a dime a dozen now. Guys can step in, right system, go there. These kids are coming out of college. Yes, everybody looks good when you, 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 know, you have single coverage and the other guy's getting double covered. So they put up big time. They have one year, and then they turn it in. They parlay it into a big time $100 million contract while the running backs are getting screwed. Jeff, what do you like with this game, if anything, this week going to Indy? Last I looked, it was 7.5 and, and a total of 50. Is it still there? Yeah, that's 7.5 and, and 50. I, I, don't like, I didn't like anything in this game. I, I did play uh, quite a few games, but this wasn't one of them. Um, Give me one of the games that you liked the, you liked the most. Well, I laid four with the, the uh, Broncos against the, the uh, Raiders when the number first came out. Uh, and again, you got teams going in different directions, and I don't normally like road favorites, but here, here's an example of team playing uh, very, very well, they, they defensively and offensively, and and they're playing against a, a team that very well may have quit, you know, and, and it doesn't look like the Raiders really even care. Uh, so, you know, I, I took a shot with that. I thought the number was a little low, and. Uh, so I laid the four at the circle when it first came out, and then uh, and now I think it's up to six and a half, which is about what I made it. Yeah, it looks like the Raiders they lost their running backs. They got injuries all over the place, and and uh, look at the Giants. I mean, they go they're going with their third string Tommy DeVito at quarterback, and the, the kid that they paid all the money to that they shouldn't have paid the money to Jones. He's now fourth string, and they just want to get rid of him so they can dump the salary so they don't have to pay him any money. I think there's like a $23 million number they're trying to get rid of. And and there's a lot of teams. There's probably 10 teams in the NFL, which is absolutely insane, that could be in tank mode. Oh. I mean, you know, I mean, this, is, I mean this, is, this is unbelievable. And there's some that can't even get to tank mode, like... The Bears, I think they would like to be in tank mode, but they're below tank mode, well, I think. But the Bears <laughs> last week actually tried to win. Yeah, they, they, did. they didn't play that bad. I mean, look at the Jaguars. I mean, oh. well, they, 
you know, these some, these some of these teams don't even look like they're trying to play. But the Jaguars already spent so much money giving Trevor Lawrence an extension. They're set on quarterback right now because they're yeah, that's where they think they need to be, and they need to put a cast around them. I mean, you you better have a couple solid running backs, at least one that's an outstanding pass receiver out of the backfield. Got to have that, and uh, you know, you got to be tough in the trenches, and that's what to me separates Detroit. From the rest of the league, their offensive line to me will push around anybody. That includes the Niners. And if Nick Bosa is not 100%, which he hardly ever is, the Niners won't have a chance against Detroit. I don't see anybody really. You mentioned Philly. I guess if Philly's 100% and they play their A game, they'll hang with Detroit. But if Detroit protects Goff, because let's face it, Goff's not a scrambling guy, and he's somebody that if he takes a blindside hit, he's going to be in trouble. But they will protect him, and that's why Detroit to me is a good quarter length ahead of everybody looking to be secretariat at the end of the year. You know, Kenny, you just brought up something with the 49ers and, and Bo Bossa. I don't know if he's going to play this week, but they're a road dog at, at Green Bay this week. I think this is going to be a good test to find out where are the 49ers at this point in the season. Last I looked, at, they were getting a point and a half. I don't know if it's still there or not. Do you know, Jeff? Well, there is there is another issue there. It's still you got, it's you got 30. Purdy has the, the bad shoulder. Yeah, although Purdy, Purdy should be all right to go. But, uh, yeah, uh, the problem, you know, the 49ers have had just an enormous amount of injuries. If healthy, you know, they're, they're about as good as any team in the NFL. The problem is that they, they haven't been healthy. And, and, you know, getting back to the quarterbacks that we were talking about before, you, you, you know, the, the Giants have to bench Jones because if Jones gets hurt, mm -hmm. They have to pay them next year. Whereas if, if they bench them, they just cut them at the end of the year, and then they and then they can you know uh, go and actually go and get a quarterback. But if you miss with a quarterback, which you know, uh, I mean, I'm a big Bills fan, and and, and the Bills drafted uh, J.P. Lozman um, uh, years ago, and it sent him back two three years. You know, and and you know the. Uh, Deshaun Watson for Cleveland. I mean, I mean, they, they signed him for God knows how much money, and they're they're stuck with him. I yeah, mean, and, and Barry should be fired, the GM. I mean, they're, they're giving Stefanski heat. Barry should be fired because he guaranteed that money, and he never vetted Watson. He, d he just waited because the grand juries didn't indict. That's the only reason Deshaun Watson's even playing football. And karma comes back and bites you in the ass. Isn't and that the, same, isn't that the same good. team that drafted uh, Benzel number one, <laughs> which was another disaster? You know, if you make a if you make a mistake with a quarterback, which again the Giants did. I mean, look look what happens to your your franchise. It, it, you know, and then if you get a if you get a, a franchise quarterback like like you know the Bills. The Bills got uh, Allen, you know, the Chiefs got Mahomes. You lock them up for their career. And and you're competitive as long as they stay healthy. You're competitive, uh, you know, for 10 years. And and and, that, and that's the key, you know, along with having a good offensive and defensive line. And you get rid of somebody like Stephon Diggs that's a freaking cancer that just wants the ball all the time and is pointing at the back of his jersey. Now he's in Houston. Karma came down and bit him in the ass, and he's hurt. But at the end of the day, Buffalo's a better team without Stephon Diggs. Yeah, and Ayuk too. You know, yep. they, they all these guys that hold out and they don't go to training camp. That's and right. They're not, they're Josh not Jacobs in. last year, and that's why he looked like crap for the Raiders at the end of the year when he and then he ended up not even playing the last few games. And that's where Zamir White got the opportunity that he did because he had two decent games, so they thought they could move on from Jacobs. But a healthy Jacobs that goes to training camp, you see him excelling with Green Bay now. Kenny, you bring up a good point. That's one of those deals where it's addition by subtraction. Your team gets better by getting rid of somebody that you don't need around, and the team rallies around going, finally, that guy's gone. Now we can, we can all do what we want to do. Jim, moving on to tonight's game, Pittsburgh at Cleveland. Three and a half the line. Do you like this game at all? Well, it, 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 there's so many mysteries around this game and the weather. It's it, you know I talked to I got a lot of relatives in in Cleveland. I was talking to them this morning. It might not be as bad as what we were thinking a couple days ago, but it is going to be cold. It's going to be in the 30s, maybe low 30s. You might have wind 15 to 30 miles an hour. You don't know because every hour it changes. They're on, they definitely aren't the lake. And they have that lake effect issue where the weather changes so quickly. But, you know, the Pittsburgh wins and the, and the Browns lose, but this is a division game. You got a division home dog. You got Pittsburgh coming off the very physical game, the tough game against the Ravens. 
But then you look at the Browns, and I mean, they can they can mess up anything. I mean, just the, <laughs> they're they're a shit show. Man. Is this, is this <laughs> something to look at but, betting under? Now, I, well, you would you would bet, but you think you look at the number. I mean, I think it was forty one. Now it's thirty six. Yeah. I think it popped back up a little bit. This thirty seven. Uh, but we don't know what the weather is going to be in a couple hours. It should, you know, it could be if the weather is thirty miles an hour gusts and twenty five steady or twenty two steady. It's going to be tough. I mean, and, and Jameis, uh, he hasn't played a game ever in a, in a temperature below 40 degrees, and now he's going to be doing it. Ray Lamarca is on this side of the table today, and he just got real excited on this. You must have a, a comment on, on this game. Yeah, I'm from Cleveland. I've been to about 37 of these games, of the Pittsburgh-Cleveland games, not just mm-hmm. games. So I know this this rivalry uh, uh, pretty well. Um it's the definition of a rivalry, no matter how brand fat the Browns are, no matter how good the Steelers are or vice versa, it's always a you know, divisional jog or not. It's always under five for some reason. It seems like, uh, I don't know, exact numbers, but if you, if, I'm sure if you look at the numbers, it would, the history, of course, different quarterback, different everything, it's going to tell you to take Cleveland right? with that hook, especially. Well, definitely, it's, but, but it, it all it all leans towards Cleveland. It does. And if it, Nick Chubb was running the way he used to run the ball, I would take Cleveland, but he's not, but so he's I'm not, not doing it. It's not, and you know, uh, I did grab the minute that it opened. Me and these and guys that we all know, when it hit 30 and a half when it opened, that was a no-brainer. That was that lasted. You playing that under? Oh, at 30 and a half, that didn't last 10 minutes on that app, on any app. It, it immediately went to 37 and a half. If you're lucky to grab that, but we'll see. Who knows? You know. Weather means nothing to these teams, guys. Weather means nothing. Uh, the trenches is what matters to these two teams. It might seem like the weather, but it's not. Uh, but like Kenny said, you know, Chubb's not, he's not a show of himself, but he's just not who he was. <laughs> You're looking at this season, it says, I'm from Cleveland, I'm a Cleveland guy, okay? What do you want me to tell you? Pittsburgh should win this football game. Who knows? I don't think there's any guarantees for tonight, but maybe Jameis Simpson. James Winston to throw an interception at some point. It's probably your only <laughs> guarantee. Tonight. Is there any chance of uh, rain or snow or well, sleet? It, it is going to rain. It's going to snow. It, it's going to be so. If it's if it's that temperature, it's not going to be rain. It's going to be snow. Um, the one thing, if you know, I will say this: if the weather does matter and the wind definitely matters, it's hard to kick field goals if the wind is high, and especially in that stadium, you're not. You know, the, in September, there were everybody was hitting 55-yard field goals, and now they're all missing 30-yard field goals. Well, it'd be hard, easy to miss some 30-yard field goals tonight if the wind is up in the third, in the 20s and 30s. Maybe field goal attempts would be a good prop bet. Field goal attempt prop bet. I think this might be an exciting one of the slow games, but it's kind of exciting if you know football. You know, one of them real football type of guy. It's not going to be a game you sit down with your buddies for a couple beers and some wings to go. This is going to be an exciting like, game, yeah, unless you're a weather guy. Yeah, not, <laughs> a lot, not a lot of live betting unless you're a guy. The latest forecast I got about a half hour ago was the wind isn't going to be that much of a factor tonight. Uh, you know, five to eight miles an hour. So so that's, the wind that it can always change, but, but it, the wind isn't going to be as big a factor. But it is supposed to rain. Uh, pretty steadily and possibly you know snow which you know you get that wet snow which which makes it makes it bad uh but yeah you're gonna see a lot of running i think in in this one you like this game jeff not not really i if i played it i would i would take cleveland uh but again i i I made the game three and uh if i if i bet it i would take the points Uh, if it went back to four i might grab a little bit but, uh, but I think, uh, you know, an interesting uh, uh, stat, which is uh, the Steelers have never won a road divisional Thursday night game. They're 0-7 and they're 0-5 under Tomlin. So I don't know if, they, you know, if that means anything, but, uh, you know, they, Tomlin hasn't won a, a, a Thursday divisional game. So I would lean, again, lean towards Cleveland, but, you know, Cleveland's not, not – very good, and Pittsburgh seems to be getting it all working this year. So I'm I'm going to probably just pass. On. Have they come within three and a half of any of those Thursday games? <laughs> that I don't know. There you go. <laughs> Great question. Bills take down the Chiefs. Bills are on a bye week. Did this 
wake up the Chiefs, or are they still in this, I don't even know what mode you call it, somehow getting through the season and making it work. They don't look like the Chiefs that they we've all been accustomed to seeing over the past years. They're going to the Panthers, they're giving 11, or laying 11. Jim, what do you think? Are they woke up, or is this, we're going to see the same thing again this week? They've been sleepwalking. I mean, yeah, that was a good word, they've, sleepwalking. They've been, they've been winning games that were, I mean, it, I think there was a two-point conversion that they almost lost to the Bengals, and then they, the, the block kick to Denver, and then last week was, I mean, they were in the game. They're still, they're still a great team, great talent. I mean, they have the best defensive coordinator in the game with Spagnola. Andy Reid is an awesome coach. You know who the Mahomes is and Kelsey and all that stuff. Um, they might get Pacheco back a little bit than, uh, this week. But I don't know if you get excited to go down to Carolina and, and, and beat. I mean, this is one of the worst teams in football. Um, and they haven't shown very much to make you scared of them. So I don't know if they get motivated. I, you know, because, like I said, they've been, they've been sleepwalking. And um, let me turn this thing off. Um, so I don't know if you get motivated. I can't lay it, but, but this year, double-digit favorites have done actually well, which is very unusual. It doesn't usually happen in the NFL. But this, this year, double-digit favorites have been winning and covering. Well, here's something else you say you don't know if you get excited to go down and play Carolina. But then the following week, they're going to go home and the Raiders are coming to town. So are you getting, You're not are you getting, getting excited, excited for the next two games? Well, they're in a great position with, you know, the, it, unless the, char I guess the Chargers would be the team if they, if they go on a roll and this team starts to lose. Three weeks you away. Could, yeah, you could, you could be, because when you have Harbaugh and, and Herbert down there and they're playing well, if they can knock off the Ravens and go on a run, you could threaten this team a little bit. But this is a two-time Super Bowl champ going for a three-peat, but they look like they think they're already there. And they, they just haven't been player, playing inspired, intense football like you would normally see out of that. Jeff, Kenny, your thoughts on the Chiefs? My, my feeling on Kansas City is, yeah, they have been uh, sleepwalking. We could say that, or maybe they're just not as good as they were. You look at the personnel, they've, uh, you know, there's been some, you know, receiver problem with Rasheed Rice going down. Talk about karma, that came back to bite him in the ass. Go to jail now in Dallas. Um, <laughs> but I mean, at the end of the day, uh, they just don't look like the same team. Now, you mentioned Pacheco, Jim. That's huge. A healthy Pacheco. Got to be 100% because that kid runs downhill, and he's hard, and he doesn't avoid contact, and that's probably you know how you get hurt every now and then in the NFL as a running back. But he's legit. He gives him a different gear from the running back position, better than Hunt. Hunt will get you yardage. Pacheco will make yardage. He'll get it on his own. He can, he can get that extra three, four yards, and he can bust one as well he's got the speed to do it so that's a key right there uh kelsey people are getting used to him just sitting down in the zone and turn around so they're, they're starting to get wise to that and not leave him alone and not just put a linebacker on him so uh, i think teams are making adjustments and uh, i just don't think kansas city's near as good as they were their record is good but let's remember their opening thursday night game against baltimore if likely his foot is not out of the, on the end line there that's another loss to start the season so yeah they've been in a lot of close ones and I think Buffalo is the team to beat in the AFC. Jeff, your thoughts on the Chiefs, let me ask you this, because Kenny brings up a great point. Even if they're not as good as they were, is this a team that may be sitting back on, we'll turn it on when the playoffs come? You know, there's just been too many weeks where they haven't. So I'm, I'm thinking, they also have a, a lineman injury, and, and you know their offensive line is not what it was. So uh, Mahomes doesn't have the time to throw like he has in the past, and and they're not as good. I mean, they've been actually relying on their defense a little bit more, which is actually pretty formidable. I was at the the Bills Chiefs game this week. I went back to Buffalo for it, and it, it was an amazing crowd. And, and you know, but again, the Chiefs were in that game right up until you know Allen. You know, if they stop Allen uh, on fourth and two, you know, it might be another one of those. Uh, last minute field goals and the Chiefs could have won by by a point but you know Allen you know made a great run and and they win um and then then and Mahomes throws the interception at the end Bills pick up a nine nine point win but it was very very competitive game uh there's something missing with the Chiefs I mean again they, they could you've been using sleepwalk they could probably sleepwalk through through Carolina and and the Raiders in in the next two weeks and and you know and then go uh, 
you know, pick up a couple more wins, but they they really don't have a lot of room for error because, you know, they're, they're only one game ahead of Buffalo, and if Buffalo uh, wins the tiebreakers, so, I mean, you know, if they, if they were to blow one of these games, uh, you know, the, they don't want to be going back to Buffalo, uh, that's for sure. And, and they're very strong at home. So I think, you know, their, their schedule is not that difficult. And there's a real good likelihood that they'll be able to um, be the one seed. And then, you know, they get the bye and they don't have to, uh, they don't have to leave Kansas City. So they could very, very easily, you know, uh, get healthy and, and, be back in the Super Bowl again, even though they're not as good. Uh, you know, the, the, there's three teams that, I, in my opinion, that, that could could do it in the AFC, and it's Buffalo, Baltimore, and and Kansas City. And I, I don't I don't think Pittsburgh's for real, even though even though they have the the better record, and and and, and you know they beat Baltimore last week. Baltimore's a better team than Pittsburgh. Uh, and I think when push comes to shove, those will be the three teams, uh, Baltimore, uh, Kansas City, and Buffalo. But when you, here's the, the one thing with Tomlin, and I know it's Thursday night record, but if Pittsburgh somehow, and they only have two losses, like Buffalo, they don't have a tiebreaker on KC, but if Pittsburgh ever got the home field advantage throughout the AFC, forget about it. You, that defense, you give me T.J. Watt, I'm good. I'll start my defense any day of the week with T.J. Watt, best mo most dynamic player in the a in the AFC on defense, and that crowd there, and now you got a field goal kicker that's kicking 57 yarders. Pittsburgh can field goal you to death, like the death of a thousand cuts, and they can beat you 18-16. They don't give a crap. They'll win by two ugly instead of Kansas City winning by or Buffalo winning by 20. Pittsburgh's good enough to do it if they get home field. If they could, if they can do it, they have a tough schedule going down the road. I mean. They have one of the toughest schedules. Nobody thought they're going to be Baltimore. That's why they made Baltimore a three and a half point road favor last week. That was crazy, right? Yeah, yeah. I agree. But they have to play Baltimore one more time in Baltimore. We got a question from the audience, Ray. You got a question? Yeah, well, real quick. After what I saw last week, I, I pretty much uh, made my decision. <coughs> we can see what's going on. Nobody can really run side to side, sideline to sideline with San Francisco or Baltimore, but their schedule deems them. It's never going to happen for either of them. When it comes to Kansas City, Ken, Ken is in it again. Buffalo showed you they got it. They got the key. They ran the O key. They brought out five, six linebackers. They frustrated them. They came at them. Whether the game's in Buffalo, whether the game's in Kansas City, unfortunately, Kansas City doesn't have the secondary to pull off the feet of this magnitude. They got that kid running around bad. And they're going to do it again, and they're not going to be able to stop the Oak. They can't. There's nothing they can do this season to stop it. Too late to bring in a receiver. Too late to do this. There's no adjustments that can be made. I truly feel that Buffalo has a key to that Kansas City ball this year. That being said, I've changed my mind, and I'm making my final pick. I'm making two of them. Big exact is 14-1 to one that Detroit beats the Buffalo Bills in the Super Bowl. 12 to 1 that the Buffalo Bills beat Detroit the Super Bowl. And on the way there, this whole dance from right now all the way, I'm just going to keep hitting the button, the money line button at Kansas City to get the money back. Until the show this could be but a year where not. both both Super Bowl teams last year don't get there. I don't know what happened, so this is going to get my little two cents in there. You know, last week we talked about the Chargers possibly being one of the teams that could make a second half push. After that game, last week it almost looked like harbaugh was telling the league i'm putting you on notice because we're continuing to get better and better and better are you a believer in the chargers or not i'm a believer in harbaugh okay i mean his 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 pedigree everywhere he's gone college or pro he's been a winner i'm a believer in herbert when he's healthy he's he's he, the team is not as stacked as it was a few years ago, they've lost some players, but the upgrade in coach is, is remarkable. I think they're going to win this game on Monday night. I think they're going to beat Herbert's got to, Jimmy Herbert's got to learn he's not Josh Allen. So when you're challenging a Cincinnati secondary player and you duck your shoulder yeah. and you cause a key fumble like he did that almost cost him the game, you're not Josh Allen. you got to know your role. 
You slide there, you already had the first down. They score there, that game's over. Cincinnati is never even in it because it's a two-score game again late. What, is, what does it take to teach you that? An injury, injury and a good It takes Jim Harbaugh to get in your face at the end of the game. Trust me, he did. And, and Harbaugh has had always had a tendency to get a little conservative when he gets ahead. And, I mean, they had a big lead in that game. And then, they, of course, you can't really stop maybe the best offense in football is Cincinnati. I mean, when they get every everybody on that field, you can't, really can't slow them down. They miss Mixon, though. They well, do. Yeah, yeah, well, they got rid of them, and that's a not. It's kind of a cheap organization. They make some terrible moves, and getting rid of him was awful because they can't. When they get ahead, they can't really protect the lead. It's still Burrow's got to go back and keep throwing the ball, and you can't win like that. You got to be able to protect the protect the lead by running the clock out and you know, eating some time. But that's the kind of mistakes that these analytic guys as you mentioned before are making and maybe that'll stop someday you like the money line with the chargers on monday or are you going to take the points or are you going to do both maybe a little bit of both a little bit of both yeah. jeff what about you again it's a it's a great game i if if i were to play it i would have to play the the chargers um but again i i think the numbers the numbers may be slightly high um but the Chargers offensively, although they're coming along a little bit, not not sure if they're going to be able to, to keep up offensively. You're starting to see a lot more Charger fans at the games. Those from San Diego area and Orange County are making it to L.A. now with Harbaugh there as opposed to the transient team they were last year before Harbaugh came in. You'll see the same thing this week if you're thinking about Denver and you talked about that line going up to six and a half. You can bet 70% of that crowd at Allegiant Stadium will be wearing orange. Mm. They will be Denver fans. Raiders beat them eight in a row. Denver beat them. Streak gets to eight. Whatever happens that one time to break the streak usually happens the next time as well. I think Denver rolls as well. Kenny, well, curious. I'd, I'd like to go ahead. You, yes, you in the back. Question. Yes, yes. <laughs> I'd like to throw in one for you. Uh, Rashad Bateman under three and a half receptions on that game. Prop that bet. Angle. Yeah, lock it in. Lock little it. Little price. You're gonna pay a little price here. That's my go-to. I know it's a new thing for you. Is that price less than your uh, adjusted HOA fee? <laughs> yeah, you like that? How about that one? <laughs> <laughs> about ten of them. You're gonna pay ten of them for that. Kenny, I'm curious in, in your opinion, how many teams you think are really have a legitimate chance to win this whole thing? Is it down to four? Is it down to five? Are we at six? Detroit, Philly. San Francisco, if they are 100% healthy, I agree, they're, they're still to be reckoned with. But if those, they losses, can get in. those losses are piling up. Right. I will say Baltimore, Baltimore. Arizona, it, it, I, I've watched them. I go to Cardinal games down there in Phoenix. Kyler Murray, I, I thought he was done after the injury. I am impressed. That tight end is phenomenal, the kid out of Colorado State. They have playmakers. Now, again, they weren't as big as Detroit on both lines of the scrimmage. And I was there, like, at that game. But they were still in that game. And let's remember, they opened in Buffalo and only lost that game by six at the beginning of the year. So this Cardinal team is is under the radar, still under the radar, only a one-game one, game, one game lead in the NFC West, which, I mean, at the end of this weekend, all, they could all be tied, you know, at six and five if the Cardinals lose up in Seattle in the rain. So, uh, but realistically, I, I think Detroit... I don't see I don't see anybody from the north. Minnesota's a nice story. Uh, outside of Detroit, I, Green Bay's and I, I, you know love is is okay. They're just not. They're very fortunate to beat Chicago, like you said last week. And uh, nobody from the south. Atlanta's not doing anything or Tampa Bay. So yeah, I see uh, three teams in the NFC: Philly, Detroit, Detroit first, Philly second, and then San Francisco. Everybody's got to be 100 percent, especially Bosa. And then in the AFC, I've got Buffalo. But, of course, we'll look at Kansas City. It's hard to, until you, Muhammad Ali, until you beat the champ, he's the champ, yeah. right? And, uh, and and then Baltimore is dangerous with Lamar Jackson. But we just never know if we're going to see the Lamar Jackson that we see a third of the way into the season running all over teams use his legs more than he tries to use his arm because they tried to get that in there. And what did it do? It ruined Michael Vick. And I think it ruins Lamar Jackson, too. The, the funny I mean, thing, I mean, the game last week, the, the, Henry the ball 13 times, which, I mean, you have a back like that. You've got to use them more than 13 times. I will times. say this. Did you see the hit T.J. Watt put on Derrick Henry? I have never seen Derrick Henry be knocked back two yards. T.J. Watt, is, he's legit. <laughs> yes, he is. Jeff, with you, are you agree about the same six teams? Is it? Are we looking at those six? Yeah. 
that those are the six. You know, and again, if, if uh, San Francisco doesn't make it, uh, which they very well may not, um, you know, then there's five. Ray's uh, choking back there. You must have another team we didn't mention. <laughs> no, what I was going to say was this. Uh, you know you know what I'm doing. Okay, Detroit, Buffalo, the whole yeah, exacto, yeah. The whole exacto. Yeah, whole bet the house, bet the farm, everything but the HOA fees. That's right. So <laughs> instead of what I'm going to do, instead of the little dark horses, let's face the facts here. If Arizona does somehow win the Super Bowl, it's going to be because of Kyler Murray. So what do you do? A little sprinkle on Super Bowl MVP Kyle Murray early. A little sprinkle on Purdue a little bit early. A little sprinkle on Darnold early. Oh, we're talking 24 to 1, 26 to 1. I mean, you know what I mean? And then you got the big main stays up here. That's it. I'm marking Seacrest out. See, uh, I'm not <laughs> arguing with this. <laughs> the sprinkles, yeah. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, I'm curious from you, is there a game this week that you like a lot that we haven't mentioned yet? Anything that you're leaning on that you've been looking at going, yeah, this, I like this line or I like this total or a first half or a money line? I I played uh, I played the Bears plus three and a half against the Vikings uh, in a home, home divisional dog. The Vikings don't really show me a, a ton. Uh, like you said, a nice story, but you know, the, the Bears have a good good defense, and I, I think that that'll be a close game, and I think maybe the, maybe the Bears might figure out how to, how to win, a, win a game, but even if, even if they decide to hold for a, a mid 40 yard field goal when they could get a little closer, which is, <laughs> Again, you, you know, there's some of these coaches just got to get fired. You know, they're, they, they're too, too conservative and, and you know, got to play for wins and, and not settle on field goals. But I think maybe that left a little sour taste in their mouth, and I, I think they come out, and, and maybe even Caleb Williams shows one, one good game for a change. Uh, but I, I definitely do like the Bears this week uh, to keep it close or win the game. I would just say this, that if, uh, if the Bears – went for that extra three yards or whatever, and the weather was nice there, it wasn't bad. Santos will make a 50 yarder, no problem. This is a 46 yarder, it's a can of corn. If you do your blocking, the ball's going right down the middle, the game's over. So everybody's Monday night quarterback or Monday morning quarterback, like, oh, if, if they would've got three extra, when the guy kicks the ball, it's 10 yards past the goalpost. Okay, so he didn't need that three yards or five yards. He didn't need it. It, it, it's bad, it just same, the same thing with Denver. You let Kansas City come in and block the field goal. These are special teams things that, uh, you know, Pittsburgh, that's why Pittsburgh's always around. Why? Because their special teams are always good. Yeah. They always come through in the clutch with something you never expected. And that's what'll screw up a total when you go for the under. All of a sudden, Pittsburgh on special teams will come up with some fluky play and, and turn it into a touchdown the other way when you weren't looking that way. So it's tough with those 36s or 37s, whatever. You know, Jeff brought up coaches, which just reminded me of something I saw, which is brings me to one of your favorite teams ever in the Cowboys. Now I see <laughs> Belichick being rumored to possibly be going to Dallas. What kind of marriage is that with him and Jerry Jones? I was Jones? just going to say, that's a, that's a strange marriage. <laughs> Belichick and Jerry Jones, I don't see that working. I mean, I signed the divorce papers the day they meet. I, mean, just, I, I can't see that. I, mean, I don't, We know Dion's not going there, and we know Dion's going to stay in college. If you didn't see it, Julian Lennon or Julian Lewis is, is going to go to Colorado, the the quarterback that left USC and decommitted. Oh, he is. He signed. He signed with Colorado. Oh, today. he ain't going anywhere. Yeah. I mean, uh, you brought it up, I think, a couple times on this show in the last couple weeks. It doesn't make a difference who the coach is for Dallas. They're not going to coach because Jerry's going to run the show from the from the press box. Well, you basically. got some you got some bad ownership in in the league. I mean, you can look at the Jets. When was the last time they did anything right? They're a mess. Dallas, they haven't they haven't been regular season. They've done pretty well this year. They did a terrible job off season, and you have the guy, the the new owner, down in uh, Carolina, who seems to be another very wealthy person that's interfering and done some terrible things. And f football wise, obviously, you got hats off that they've made all the money they made to be able to be in the position they're in. But they're not allowing the football people to make the football decisions. And when you do that, I think you screw things up. 
Any other questions from the audience before? Oh, yes, Ray, go ahead. Back in. <laughs> David, Te David Tepper, I read his book. I heard about it. He is this year backing off. <clears throat> he is going to back off and let do the Robert Kraft type deal. And you can't hold to his word. The dude's a maniac. If you know this guy, Tepper, he's awesome. He applied for a job at uh, Gene Morgan real quick. Like, 20 years ago, he didn't get the job, and he got real mad at the, the guy. So what he did 20 years later is he bought his house for $8 million, and he took a wrecking ball and wrecked the house, and he built a $40 million house on the house. The guy that, that's the type of human being you're dealing with with temper. They actually modeled the show billions after him. But he said he's going to uh -huh. back off and do his thing. All right, quick question. I just want all four of your opinions. Probably what are his HOA fees? So, <laughs> he probably doesn't have any. He doesn't have any because... He doesn't have any because there's a He league. bought the whole town? He doesn't yeah. live in Summerlin. He doesn't yeah. have the Howard Hughes. Thing. He bought all the land. What's your what's your prop so bank question? I got a question for, right, what's the best one for tonight? I can't decide. I'm probably going to take it a vote because that's just what I do. Probably Jameis to throw a touchdown. So or not a touchdown, one? but an in interception. Jameis Winston to throw an interception minus 214 or oh, oh. Chris Boswell to make two field goals tonight minus 194. I like that one. Ooh. Yeah, I, I, I would go with. Boswell. I like I like the, I like Boswell it's not a lot be better than Winston. Well, if Jeff's if Jeff's right and it's only eight mile an hour winds, it's not going to really affect the kicking that much. If I mean the the, the predictions all week long have been up. I mean, eight's nothing. If but if it's twenty twenty five, then it's something. Well, the reason I like that a lot more too is just Kenny touched on earlier. Pittsburgh will field the goal you to death. Yep. Yep. Over and over. They they don't. Yeah, they want to score, but. They, they they they'll just keep kicking field goals all that long. By the way, Cleveland, I think last week their field goal kicker missed a bunch of field goals. I think he missed a bunch of kicks. Three in a row. Well, was it three? I believe. Is he so. still got a job? <laughs> <laughs> he may not have a job. <laughs> oh, no, the, ha the Haslam's are in charge. He's got a job. <laughs> in fact, in, in fact he, we we just guaranteed his salary. We put it right next to Deshaun Watson's. Yeah, right. Jeff, I'm going to ask you a question that we've talked about on the show that you were in here and being that you're a numbers guy and stuff like that. What is it worth the head coach to make an impact on the line? The difference in, in coaching between two teams, does the head coach have an impact on what that line can move? The, the head coach really doesn't have much of an impact on the line, although it should. It should. It, uh, but I don't think I don't think it really does. Although, you know, in the playoffs, you know, I mean, you know, we've been talking about Cleveland. You know, Schottenheimer just never won a playoff game, and you, and and you keep going on and on. There's certain coaches that that don't win, and then you got guys like Belichick that you know have an incredible record in the playoffs when the games when the games matter. Um, so. Yes, the, the 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 head coach should should be uh, a factor. I you know when I make my numbers, if you know sometimes I'll I'll make a half a point adjustment, but you can't really make too big of an adjustment. Although the, the game plans and stuff, you, you have some coaches that are just always prepared, and mm -hmm. and you know you can actually you know bet on one coach versus another uh you know a good coach versus a bad coach because you know the the coaching does matter but but not i don't think it's built into the line if you had the head coach from detroit who's kind of a loose cannon you're really not sure what he's going to do but i mean he's done a tremendous job i'm not knocking him but you really don't know what he's going to do he might go for fourth and four from his own four you know i mean he just and then you get a guy like Harbaugh, who's always going to go by the book, yeah. and he's a fantastic coach with the pedigree. You can't have any more pedigree than that, or Reed. I mean, but then you have this wild weed over here, so they're all different. But most of them are within a box. They, they play within the rules of, of what coaching and standard football is, but then you occasionally you get this this one kind of character. Yeah, Detroit and Philadelphia, both their coaches. You never, you never know. I mean, earlier this year, I forgot which game it was. It was, I think, 14 seconds left in the half, and it was like fourth and one at the 15. And and you figured, you know, they'll, they'll kick a field goal, and they they went for it, and they they did the uh, like a little uh, a little run, you know. And, they didn't get the first down, so they didn't even kick the field goal. And and uh, I know he got criticized for that, and he should have. 
because even if you make the first down, you got to use your timeout. You know, now you have no timeouts left, and you have to say the 12-yard line. I mean, it costs yourself three points. But a lot of the, these coaches, you know, make make tremendous uh, mistakes. And we were talking about uh, Jones. I mean, best thing Jones could ever do is fire himself. You know, because because he he's the reason. You know, the main reason that the the Cowboys haven't been successful. He's made terrible mistakes with drafting. Uh, and and if if he actually hired a a, a good uh, good general manager and he just he wants to win and he sat back and uh, you know and, and let the uh, actual football guy run the show you know Dallas would be a lot better than they are. Kenny what do you think coaches should be a factor in lines or not? They are for me and I gotta first off I'll tip off Mark Lawrence Mark uh, of course Jim Fife and Mark have been friends for a long time but Mark Lawrence told me the, the, when we did our preview for the season that not only would the Chargers hang in there with the Chiefs, that they would beat the Chiefs in the AFC West. And I was like, are you kidding me? I go, you lost all your receivers? Yeah, you vet your receiver. Well, what do you got, Quentin Johnson? I mean, come on, what are, what are you doing? You got the kid McConkey coming out of Georgia? And I was looking, I was like, that team is dangerous, and Harbaugh makes them dangerous, and he gets that chemistry where? The trenches. Once they realize that they can hang with anybody in the trenches, they're not intimidated. The skill position players, they'll figure it out. And that's, that's what makes a guy like Jim Harbaugh awesome. John Harbaugh's been doing it for a long time, although he, he pisses me off as far as with Lamar Jackson because he's not letting him run like he should, and that's probably what's cost him playoff games because Lamar doesn't get in a groove, and all of a sudden there's four minutes to go in the third quarter, and they're down 10. And, you, and if you're laying points, you're, you're hurting. You're just hoping they limp through the game. So, But, yeah, I, I, for me, I do take – consideration to the coaches and Campbell after not kicking that field goal for Detroit last year I lost respect for him because again at the end of the day I, I look at the analytical crap and I get it you know there's certain times to go and you talked about a guy going for it fourth and one on his own four Jeff Monken for Army did that fourth and one on his own ten once and I looked and I go risk and reward if you get it you still got to go 89 yards if you don't get it they got to go 10 I mean so you know, you know I mean it, it, you got to look at risk and reward still and I, I I don't think a lot of these guys get it but guys like Jim Harbaugh and uh, you know certain coaches in the league and Andy Reid to me they should come into play as far as the point spread especially when going up against a novice guy a young guy that doesn't have a lot of experience let me add one more layer to this because I, I wanted to see where we we're gonna go with the head coach but I know you're a big fan of Spagnuolo. How much does that add on when you have somebody like that on your staff? It, ma it makes a big difference. When you have what you consider to be one of the top one or two defensive coordinators in the game and you have players that can play his scheme, it, it makes a big difference to me. Coaching means a lot to me. Offensive, defensive. I agree. But, uh, it, it, head coach, it, mean, it means a lot. I, I, I prefer, maybe it's because I'm older, and but the... The old football, block, tackle, catch, you know, the, for, I, the analytics drive me crazy because those numbers are made up of, of small sample sizes of unequal coaching, unequal teams, unequal quarterbacks, and you're making these numbers up in your head to do, this is what you do in this spot. But not every team, do you really want to play an extra quarter against Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid? Or would you rather no. play it against I'm so the, upset that my the Pierce Bay and and, uh, and and Minshew? You know, yeah, I'll play another quarter against those guys, but I'm On not going to. But you can't. It's the same analytics are telling you what to do against both, and it's not equal. It makes I, no sense. I'm with you because I'm a big as a former basketball coach. I'm big into coaching. You can have players, but the players are only going to do what the coach requires or asks them to do, or run the plays or run the defensive schemes. They're going to run what they've been asked to do, what's been called in, which is done by the coaching staff. I've seen many teams with a lot of quality players not have coaches and are not very good. Then again, as you brought up, you have the Chargers who lost a lot of guys who have a coaching staff and a scheme that makes them dangerous. It makes them dangerous, but he, just like San Francisco with Nick Bosa, Chargers better have Joey Bosa 100%. That's another key guy. Those Bosa boys, when they're 100%, they are a game changer. When they don't have those guys, the defense is not near as good. I just want to say one thing real quick as far as old school stuff that Jim and I go, what happened to the 80s, the late 70s, the 80s, even into the early 90s? Every time a team got to the two-yard line, we looked 
Touchdown, touchdown. It's a, it's, it's a touchdown, right? Up and over. Sam Bam Cunningham. All these guys up and over the pile. Every time. Unless a linebacker timed it perfectly and hit him in the air, you're getting in the end zone on four cracks. Unless you're Pete Johnson for the Bengals in the Super Bowl. But other than that, I mean, it, it was automatic, right? Now, fourth and one. Oh, shit. Let me stand back at my five-yard line. Hand it to the running back next to me. There's not even eye formation or split backfield. Let me hand it to this guy. Now you need fourth and five. You don't need freaking one. I'm sick of this crap. They've ruined this crap. You see how many teams with their little finesse bullshit get inside the five-yard line. First and goal. And what are we doing on second down? Because the run didn't work on first down. We're passing. So now it's third and two. Now what are we doing? Oh, we got to pass. No, we'll go off tackle. So we gain a yard. Now it's fourth and one. We got to let's line up in the shotgun. So when it's fourth and one, it becomes fourth and five. It is absolutely moronic. What are you doing freaking practice all day? I, I get it. You take everything from from shotgun snaps. I, that's the way of the game. You want to spread it out. But you still should have your guy able to go under center when it's fourth and one. And you're letting this bullshit with Philadelphia get. They haven't changed it. So good for Philly taking advantage of the tush push. Because until they stop it, Philly's the smartest team. And they got Jalen Hurts that can do it because he can squat 600 pounds. But the rest of these teams aren't doing it. Why not? If they're going to let you have five big linemen push your guy in, then freaking do it. You know, take it, until they change the rules, what happened to forward motion? There's no forward motion right. stopping anymore. It's fucking rugby, man. I'm sick of it. The, the, up, the up and over was exciting. Right. And we don't see it we anymore. We don't see it. I saw it last week. Somebody did it, and they got up and over on a third and goal. I think it was. The, I think it was the UNLV Rebel game. I saw somebody went I saw, Yeah, but there was a there was a pro game too. Somebody did, didn't. I go. Oh my God. I go. Let me save that footage. <laughs> <laughs> Last questions for the audience, Ray. I'm sure you got one more. Yeah, go I ahead. Got three more. I like what you said. Three. Real quick. <laughs> well, I two comments in that thing. Uh, like you said about Herbert, I love what you said because you know halfway through the year, I'm thinking, what is Harbaugh doing? Restricting this dude. You're restricting this guy. Unleashes, and you were right, and then he's right. You're not Lamar Jackson. You're not Mahomes, dude. Know your role. You're not I Josh Allen. And right? I love the way he's going. As far as what we were talking about with the coordinators and everything, this is what I love. We went back, we danced on it on the last um, podcast, culture, character, locker room, stuff like that. And the coordinators do matter. They matter a point, point and a half to me. Um, they know the role. Spagnolo, Dick LeBeau. A lot of these coaches, man, uh, like we said, are victims of the Peter principle. They did so good at a coordinating position, they has got to be a great head coach. And then... It fails, and that's where they have to stop it right there. That happens. Uh, that happens more than it was, not. It was, with that Peter principle, it was, it, it, in it business was. and in life. In business and life. That's yeah, it's yeah, all the same. Absolutely. But and Jeff, Jeff you said your your one of your best plays was the Bears, and they brought a new offensive coordinator in last week, and they changed the the game, and they they Williams they had him running the ball. He used his legs more. The, their game plan was so much better and positive than the previous weeks. And they're a dangerous team, and when you look at Minnesota, their quarterback has, have, has some kind of ailment he wasn't practicing. There's some, he's, I don't know what it is, but something's wrong with Darnold. I, and physically. every time Tennessee had a big play last week, there was a flag, except for that 98-yard touchdown pass or whatever, but there was, there was a touchdown that was called back that was a, a late holding. So every time Minnesota's lead was gonna go back down to under six, it was like the old remember the Titans crap. <laughs> they did remember the Titans and throw those little flags, man. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. I, and I have no problem with flags, I, although we get into it now, and it is a version of flag football. But throw it when it happens. Don't wait till 30 seconds after you see the guy in the clear and then throw the flag. Yeah. That's what pisses us off. I got one more uh, betting tip for the weekend for everybody. Go ahead. A little reminder that uh, the Philadelphia Eagles are playing the Los Angeles Rams this year. It's the lowest first quarter season for Philadelphia in 55 years, and it's also the lowest scoring first quarter for the Rams in 47 years. The Phillies average 1.2 yards uh, points per game in the first quarter, and the Chargers average 1.1 1 .1 points per quarter. You mean the Rams? Quarter. You the mean the Rams, Rams? The Rams, the first quarter this year. I don't know who to pick, but I'll tell you what, <laughs> each of them have a hard time scoring in the first quarter, and it's historic. I'm taking the over, it's indoors. <laughs> 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 Kenny Thompson, thanks so much for joining the Jim Fai Show. I appreciate it. Anytime I could be on the stage with a legend. Oh, thank you. Jeff Whitelaw, thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Mr. Feist, what's your last thoughts before we're going to come back on Monday? We were going to do two shows today. Well, we yeah, said but this, I mean, but now we're not going to be here on Monday live 
with uh, Ray Lamarck is going to be joining us again, and Doug Casera is going to be here as well with us. Well, it's Doug's birthday today, by the way. Oh, perfect. Thanks. Who's your birthday? Doug Casarian. Doug Casarian. He's going to be with us Monday. With tomorrow's you. mine. Facebook alerted me. Oh, tomorrow's yours. And tomorrow, and tomorrow's mine. Tomorrow's mine. Oh, all right. So Make sure you stick back around. Back. We're going to give away wine, but what's your final thoughts? My final thought is that we're talking foot, NFL football. We have some other things we should start to imp implement into the show. we got playoffs coming up. 12 game, 12 team playoff in college football, which is very exciting. I mean, it's, it, it's changed the whole game to be able to talk about 12 different teams and organizations and fan bases. And, and now, and also we have college basketball yeah. and we have pro basketball. And, and um, <laughs> Kenny and I were talking, where the hell did this kid, how does this kid connect, drop the number 17 to the Lakers? And then he comes out and scores. 37 the other night for the Lakers. It's pretty amazing. And, and, and you this, know basketball yeah. because you were damn good. Yeah. So I, I'll let you answer that. No, question. the crazy thing is that I know as nuts as it is because the Lakers used number 55 to grab Bronny. But trust me, they thought about the number 17, just getting them to make sure that they got him <laughs> to have him with dad. But Connect is the real deal. I mean, he, he really is. And he really blossomed at Tennessee his last year there. And uh, when you have a kid six 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 seven that can shoot like that he's ambidextrous he could he's got good handles for a big guy he, he's, he's going to be a dynamite player down the line i think i read something about him he was actually about seven or eight inches shorter and then all of a sudden in one year he just sprouted like a weed yep. and i mean yeah. it, it, and they, i think he transferred schools also at the same time he ended up in tennessee yeah so. that's a good move for him. monday we'll talk nfl we'll talk ncaa playoffs We'll talk some college basketball, maybe some pro basketball. We'll, okay. just, we'll just hit them all on Monday. Join us Monday at noon here on the patio at Dom DeMarco's Pizzeria and Wine Bar where the good times roll and the pizza or the wine flows. I'm thinking pizza because I'm getting hungry. <laughs> yeah, we're getting pizza. My name's Tommy Canale. We'll see you on Monday, everybody. There you go.